is going to be brake day on the 64 Caddy. I'm not going to take you through step by step how to do it. Doing drum brakes is very simple. Um, but a couple tips. So the first is take pictures of everything before you take it all apart. Um, you can always go on the other side and look, but at the same time it's easier to put it back together when you have pictures. Uh, the second thing is the reason why I'm doing the brakes. This rear brake is probably the worst out of all of them. Usually on my old cars there's enough stopping material on these shoes uh, to you know put the drum back on and call it good, but this one it's almost worn out. I mean that just won't last very long and if you're going to do one you might as well do all of them. It makes no sense to do half. So that's what we're going to do today. So it should be fun. drive of this car now that I finished the brakes so new shoes new wheel cylinders new hoses and a new master cylinder so basically new everything all the way around I bled it using this really cool tool right here it has a check valve in it and you can bleed brakes by yourself uh, this one was cool because bleeding drum brakes is fairly simple but it's easier to do with two people but now I can do it all by myself so the car is on all four wheels. Last time we drove it, it barely stopped. So I'm hoping this time will be a different story. I'm not gonna put the skirt to the hubcaps back on it at this point because you never know if I need to take them off again. So, 
let's see how she does. New brakes, new fuel system. Um, the only concern I have is the coolant temperature. When I drove last time, it said it was hot. So we'll just have to see what it does this time. Let's see. Check out this brake pedal. Go down an inch, and then I can't push it out anymore. So we should be good. Thought it'd fire up better than this. See if we have fuel. Yeah, it looks like we do. It's interesting. All right, brake clean to the rescue. Just needed prime. This thing's kind of smoky, but that's to be expected. Fire extinguisher, just in case. All right, we're gonna go around the block. So the power steering definitely, I mean, it works, but I, hear, I heard it groaning earlier, so I don't, I don't understand. All oh, the brakes feel wonderful. Let's go around the block. This is a big old floaty boat. Always needs a steering box. Oh, <laughs> those tires are awful. <laughs> Do you see, feel, see this bouncing? Does that bounce? That's from the flat spots in the tires. Woo, yeah, they're gonna have to do tires for sure. Uh, I need to go back because I feel like one of these suckers is gonna explode. The brakes feel really good though, I like them. Really done anything on the carburetor except for base settings, so that kind of stuff needs to be done. She's a runner and a driver. Uh, that's bad. I can't. Hey, the horn works. I can't drive this any farther until those tires are fixed. So the temp started going down once the car was driving. I don't know if this Cadillac is like my Cadillac where the temp gauge really doesn't mean it's overheating. It just shows the engine's hot versus cold. I don't know. Oh, I need to, I need to back this sucker in. I'm never you guys know I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to park both of these beasts next to each other and see which one is longer. I love how the tail fins on this one is when the period when they were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, biggest on 59 and then smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I believe 64 might be the last year of fins and then 65 they got rid of them. Don't quote me on that, but look at that. So 
I've parked these pretty much so they're even with each other. What is your guess? Which one is longer? Right now, in looks, it looks like the 64 is a longer car. It looks like the trunk lines line up about the same. The backs of the front doors. Eh, of course the sedan's a little smaller. But if we go around the front, which one's longer? Well, I really think it's the 64, but guys, not by much. So we're talking, I mean, look at that. It's, we're talking like three inches, maybe. The, the 56 has these Dagmars, which extend the front of the car probably about a foot. You can see the, the difference in the front of the fenders where the headlights are. That's considerable, but you have the Dagmar, and you're really not much. I mean, the Dagmar, let me go over all the way. And the Dagmar goes to, when eyeballing it, the Dagmar goes to about here. So, you know, the Cadillac might be, the 64 might be that much longer, which funny when you look at them since this one is in the you know correct 60s styling where it is low and flat and long everything in the 60s was that and the 56 is well 50s styling where a little taller a little rounder you can see that this one looks just by the look the design it looks longer it also doesn't help that it's convertible but they're really close. I, I wouldn't have guessed. I would have thought the 56 would have been maybe a foot shorter, but no, they're, they're almost identical. So it's crazy the difference in style just from 56 to 64. Who, uh, do cars nowadays change radically that much? The dashes, I guess, are similar, and eh, maybe not, <laughs> very distinct, but the back ends, you can't mistake either one for what it is. You got fins, you got a V, it says Cadillac Crest, and this one has fins and a V and says Cadillac right on it, so. My personal taste, I like 50s caddies better, but some people like these caddies better. I bet these caddies are a little bit uh, easier to work on and probably a little bit better at driving. They did a few upgrades on these ones over, which is to be expected over, you know, the years between 56 and 64 where they just drive a little bit better. Um, it is what it is, but they're both big boats and they both are huge and yeah, they're awesome. When you look at this, I can take this with one hand and I can bounce it around. I can take this one with one hand I can bounce it around too. <laughs> so I had to do this. This is definitely worth my time to do.